Yo guys, welcome to Trend Ram. My name is Vieco and today I'm gonna do an in-depth tutorial on the modeling method that I use for creating my rattan objects. So I did this video a while ago where I created this rattan tulip and a lot of you liked the video, but the video was a time-lapse video, so you didn't really see what I was clicking, what logic did I use, etc. Some of you kind of managed to figure it out, but there were a lot of people who just struggled with it. So this time I'm not gonna be creating that rattan tulip, I'm actually gonna be creating this beautiful statue of an owl, it's Evermotion's model, it's Arc Models 236, they have these awesome statues here, I encourage you to check them out, they look really good, but our Rattan Owl looks like this. And now if I zoom in, you can actually see that all the details, all the weaves are there, everything looks super defined, you can zoom in more and, and look at it. It's it's a very, it's, it's a very detailed rat and owl. So first, to start the whole video, we're gonna be using three things. One is Morpher modifier, the other is skin wrap, and the third thing is a script called uv to mesh What does uv to mesh do? uv to mesh is a script that takes, you know, whenever you do an unwrap, it will take those UV islands that you have in your unwrap and it's gonna transform them into a physical object in your viewport. Now, a cool thing about uv to mesh is once you select your object and you, if you click flatten from UV, it will create a clone which has a morpher modifier. And here you have this uh, selection. This is which object is uh, morphing it into and it actually creates this as an additional object which is hidden but it morphs so our owl actually morphs into the scenario from our unwrap here and as you can see it's 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 the same it's the same object it's the same model but before we start morphing and skin wrapping etc our object generally needs some preparation it's not it's not that straightforward uh, first you need to prepare your UVs so your UV islands are generally gonna be you know like where your rattan will will be where it will go and as you can see these are the sections that I kind of separated for easier maneuvering I actually made those sections physical so it was easier to unwrap and just easier to, easier to handle and yeah this is it a second part that's super important for rattan whenever a rattan furniture is made it's never kind of cut straight it, it doesn't have a clean cut because I mean it does but you don't see it because it's super sharp and you know you, you would cut yourself it, if it was like that so what do i mean by that whenever you have like a piece of rattan that goes somewhere the corners of that rattan are always going to be curved around it so uh, so they're always going to be kind of tucked in here you can see the renders that i did where i where i use this uh, rattan modeling technique and you can see for example if you look at these parts you can feel you can actually see it here or here maybe even better here you can see how the rattans are kind of twisting in they're turning in and you just don't you know you don't see that clean cut so the thing is you need to prepare your object for those curves so the easiest thing that i do i mean this is the first thing that i always try you just go into border mode here select all of the all, all of the borders that you have this is why detaching everything into separate meshes is, is useful and what do you do and you just click extrude now extrude is gonna push things in make sure that you don't have any of these bends or anything so just just push it in a little bit if you want to go further with this you can you, you can hit extrude again and it's gonna actually start to kind of spiral the whole thing just to give you an example so here is a plane if you select the border and look what happens with the ex with multiple extrusions so you have this part and now when you click on plus it will go in plus again it will go in so it will kind of you know like it will just turn in turn in this is how you can make your rattan to be tucked in more but for our little owl one level of extrusion is enough and it's this one and now when you place turbo smooth you can actually see how on all the borders this whole thing is curved in and tucked in and when you look at it from afar you can also feel that here nicely but now since we added those extruded edges we need to redo our unwraps again i'm gonna add my uvw unwrap so I'm going to open my UV editor and for this point I can just select all of these. I'm using Unwrap Pro, it, 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 I don't know, I kind of got used to it, it's, it's a little bit practical to use. So I just hit this button and as you can see here, it will just add this edge. So before, after, before, after, you can see. So this is that extruded edge that we added. So now our unwrap is ready. 
Now, before we turn our UVs to mesh, I'm just going to enable Turbo Smooth. So it's just going to be one iteration of Turbo Smooth, just so that, you know, we kind of have a higher quality data to work with when we're going to be morphing and transforming and skin wrapping, etc. So Turbo Smooth on one. And now I'm going to hit flatten from UV. We got the clone of our lovely owl. And as you can see, when I do this, it kind of goes into what we unwrapped. But there's one problem with that now. If you kind of compare the size of these UV islands, you can notice that they are actually much smaller than our owl is. And this is actually a problem because we're going to kind of place those islands above our retin pattern here and they're going to pick up, you know, which part of the retin they can catch. And as you can see, we will get an incorrect scale because it's a super tiny surface and it will get, you know, a tiny part of retin. So, everything, you know, the main scale is going to be incorrect. So how do I fix it? I'm generally going to go back to my original morph owl shape. I I'm just going to clone it, uh, turn it back to the UV part. I'm going to collapse it now. So this is now collapsed. And I'm just going to kind of try to aim to resize this object to the size of an owl so that it all kind of looks logical. So from the left size, you can actually see that we can, you know, see this bottom part of the owl is this part here. I'm going to kind of just overlay this part here and just going to scale it up. So I'm going to scale it up until these polygons relatively feel the same. Okay, this is generally correct. So I'm aiming for these parts to kind of feel okay-ish and they do. And this is where I'm going to leave it. So now we need to rotate it back to our original position where it was and just move it, let's say here. Just look at the difference. So this is the correct scale of these UV islands. And with our original owl, this was the size of our UV islands there. So you see how off it is so be careful of that so how do we approach it so morpher is a modifier that morphs one object to another object these two objects they need to have the same properties the same polygon counts etc etc but here you can see this is that so the the shape that you see here this is the object that's currently being hidden somewhere and it's loaded here as in that this owl will transform into that where well we're gonna change this object to this one now so we go here where you just click on pick object from scene and you click on this one and as you can see the resizing kicks in and now our owl's UVs are completely logical and now we can you know took a realistic chunk of this retin and just apply and stick it on. So I'm just going to hide all these and just leave my my uh, owl and my retin here. So my morpher owl and my retin. So what I'm going to do, set my morpher to 100 so that we overlay it like this. So here you can exactly see which portion of the owl is going to be affected by the retin, right? So for example, if this is that bottom part that I was talking about, and I want that bottom part, for example, to have these two weaves, I'm just going to I'm just going to move it here just so that you know you kind of align it nicely. Once you're done, we need to cut this raton into the profile of our UV islands. I like to use tie flows tie select for this. I'm just going to select my raton piece here and I'm going to scroll down to tie select. After I applied tie select, I'm going to go to selection method and I'm going to choose mesh. Now, this raton will make a selection based of some other mesh. So once we selected the mesh method, method here, I can click on pick and I can pick my UV island here. Now you can see the projection of the selection is, is instantly made on our raton. So now I can just collapse this. And if I go to my vertex mode, it's you're going to see that same selection here. So I'm going to control and click on polygon and it will turn that vertex selection into polygons. One other thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit grow one time. This is just, you know, a precaution to kind of fill any gap that might be happening around it. And now we're going to, we're going to press control I to invert the selection and we're going to hit delete. So from this point, as you can see, we got a nice cut a nice clean cut of our UV islands here. And if I go to top view, you can here also you can see how this cut is nicely made. And now it's time to skin wrap. So I'm going to add skin wrap to our retin object. Now, important part is to move that skin wrap because our UV here, which is our morpher that we that we saw earlier. So our skin wrap will literally follow this path into assembling the whole owl. But it's important how you place the skin wrap. So you want to generally just place it somehow in the middle 
And as you can see here, the purple line here is, is where my Morpher UV uh, object is. And so I'm generally going to place it, let's say, something like here. You also need to be careful about where you place it, because if you place it too low, when you morph it, Morpher is going to just push it much more inside and you're not going to get the correct result. If you place the skin wrap on top of that morphing object, right? It's gonna be pushed out. It will act like you added like a push modifier, you know, like cranked up push modifier or something. In some cases, you want those things to happen. Just keep in mind that you can decide where you want your, mo your mesh to kind of morph when you are skin wrapping it. You have that luxury here. So now that, that we added the skin wrap to our Rattan object, so you need to have one object that has Morpher and the other object that has skin wrap. Those are the logics. So now when we added skin wrap to our original object, there are a few things that you wanna click before you simulate any skin wrapping or anything. So my kind of default go-to is to set the deformation engine from vertex mode to face mode and go to the bottom and make sure weigh all points is clicked. Once these two things are set, uh, click on add and just click here. And now here on the bottom left corner, you can actually see skin wrap calculating the simulations. Okay, so our skin wrap calculation is done. Let me just give you a quick example why weigh all points is important. So object with the skin wrap, in this case, our rattan object will do exactly what our morpher uv object does if you have any mesh data that's outside of this morpher object area so so for example if you have you know your mesh is let's say following this profile like this and let's say you have some other mesh piece that just goes here if you don't click weigh all points in the skin wrap this whole area is going to be left off. It's just going to stay fixed on the ground while everything else is moving. But when you click weigh all points, it's going to also drag those external elements. So let's see what we actually did. So we have calculated our skin wrap. And now when I click on my morpher object and if I move it, look what happens. Everything moves with it. And now when I click on my skin wrap object again, isolate it, you're going to see that we actually got that owl shape that I was showing you earlier. And yeah, this is practically how you do the method. Now, this requires a lot of fine tuning. You can play with the, uh, with a fall off here and uh, you can even try blend to base mesh and all these options. Just try to investigate what skin wrap has to offer. Like I said, weigh all points and phase deformation is my default setting. Whenever I'm doing retin, I just you know click those and those two functions work in like 90 percent of the cases that i use and that's practically it so from that point what i basically did i just added a little bit of shell and i added some turbo smooth i added some shell just to add some sort of thickness to the whole thing and then i added turbo smooth just to smooth out any ugly parts happening. And this is how I got my rattan owl. And this is my method of doing rattans. So I hope this rattan tutorial video was useful for you. And I hope you kind of learned how to how to work with it. It's kind of hard to cover all the things that can go wrong, you know, in, in, in creating rattans. So it does require a lot of patience and just messing with, with options. You kind of need to understand how sensitive some features are so that you can, you know, use the most of them but yeah in general this is the whole process and these are the results you can get and like i said with this method you can you can create anything turn anything into rattan so let me just cover one thing so in my uh in my first video a lot of comments that i got was about why don't they use uh f-storm geo pattern or corona or corona pattern you know so these are those features where you create one little pair pattern in in our example let's say one little piece of rattan and the rendering engine will just scatter it around the object and therefore create the whole thing how is that beneficial so a it avoids skin wrapping and it avoids morphing so you would think why would you even use this method if, if that exists well there's a few reasons why you may not want to use that method so first thing is if you're going to be sending your object to somebody else, especially somebody who is in a different 3D software, in a different rendering engine, well, you're going to have a hard time explaining to them, you know, how to use the feature that is not existent there. So for compatibility reasons, that's the first thing. Second thing, when you do it full in mesh, 
it's much easier and faster to render. Yeah, it's 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 all because this is just a raw mesh data. You're not putting any additional render effect to do the other effects. But one of the main reasons why I don't use these methods is if I have an issue with a single weave some, somewhere, if, if I'm in geo pattern or corona pattern, I need to go to my unwrap and try to fix that one point, which will actually affect multiple rattan strands. I cannot affect just that one little piece. I have to deal with a bunch of them because I'm tweaking the whole UV data, not to mention things where geo pattern or corona pattern just cannot save you. For example, like here, here I had this table. If you can see the pattern just goes here and then twists around. Around, but then on this corner it needs to be connected with this part your geo pattern or corona pattern is going to create a cut here and you'll th there will be no way for you to connect these logically so this bit is manually connected and this is the benefit because i can literally select one weave and i can just physically connect it with another when you're dealing with these uv projection type of uh, objects you you cannot you don't have that ability because it's practically imaginary you can only see it in rendering engine and not in 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 the viewport and that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video i think it's going to be a little bit longer than than my usual videos but hey it's an in in-depth detail explanation it is what it is error motion thank you for sponsoring this video and see you all soon